In this video, we're going to talk about structures. We're going to talk about what they are and why we like them. So structures are a new way of holding data. We've talked about other ways of holding data when we talked about vectors, when we talked about arrays, and we talked about cell arrays. So now we can add structures to that list of ways that we can hold data. And so in terms of analogies, um, so when we talked about vectors, we might have said that or vectors and arrays, they're kind of like lockers or something like that. Let me, they're kind of like lockers, like a row of lockers, let's say, where each part has its own little spot and a different way of accessing it. We talked about cells, we kind of thought of them as kind of like a box of bags. Uh, let's say I have a bag here, a bag here, a bag here. It's a beautiful picture. Um, now with structures, um, you can kind of think of them kind of like a filing cabinet in the sense that, oh, let me see if I can draw ooh, a little three-dimensional picture here. Oh, man. Okay. So it's kind of like a filing cabinet, all right? That's like a little file open. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not too bad, actually. So it's like a filing cabinet in the sense that now you're holding data but each one is kind of in its own category in the sense that we could say that this first drawer contains people's names and let's say this drawer contains people's ages and this drawer contains people's heights All right so now it's a way of classifying or storing data based off of categories that we're able to create ourselves We'll go more into this um, in other videos, but with structures as well, we now have a new data type, which is called struct. So structures have the data type struct, same way that celeries have the data type cell. So why do we like structures? There's all these different ways already that we talked about in terms of storing data. Why do we need another way of storing data? Um, and so what I'll say is, uh, when we talked about vectors and arrays, in order to use a vector and array, you had to understand some implicit information behind where the data was inside of your vector or array. So for instance, if I had, let's say an array that had some rows and some columns that was representing students' grades, I would have to know for some reason, or I would have to know that each row represents a different student and let's say the first column was like test one grades and the second column was test two and then some other stuff. But I have to know that. I have to know how my data is organized in my array in order to efficiently be able to use it. Um, and then cell arrays are kind of similar in that sense where um, you have to know what each part, each row, or each column represents. But then also with cell arrays, we have that whole issue of indexing, whether you're using parentheses or curly braces, right? So that adds to the complexity of that. But now with structures, instead of having to necessarily know positions in order to gain information, to know that the second row deals with the second student or that the second column deals with test two grades, um, now we can reference things based off these categories that we present, these categories that we create, which are called field names. And so if I wanted to figure out a person's name, I can access the name category of my structure. It doesn't matter where it's at, I just know that there's a category called name. Same thing with age. I don't have to know which row or column the ages are represented because now every structure has its own category of age. We'll talk more about indexing structures in future videos, but we get this we get this added benefit of being able to access parts of our data using English, using actual words that we understand rather than just knowing that a certain row or certain column represents something.